you don't know nothing about Smart Schoolboy Nine. This this mf -er, uh first minute, he popped up on my goddamn TikTok because everybody keep talking about this dude. And, uh, you know, they exposing him and whatnot. And I keep seeing, like, documentary videos on my TikTok about smart schoolboy nine. He out here terrorizing the UK. The Utes. He, he's fucking terrorizing the UK Utes. And he's an old, dirty bastard. You feel me? And, uh, yeah, bro, he's just a, a deranged, a deranged MF-er. So we got to check it out. And, uh. I ain't gonna lie. He's so ugly, bruh. It's scary. So let, let's just jump into it. I'm about to share my screen with you. Saturday night. A bridge collapses in China. Twisters makes its worldwide debut. And over in one of Reddit's darkest corners, a peculiar mystery awaits. User named Maria has just uncovered a series of Instagram accounts, all equally unsettling, uncanny, and terrifying. I came across a post on our. Well, I was about to read it. I was about to read it for the fucking chat, and he had this book. Instagram, or someone mentioned these creepy Instagram accounts. No, what the fuck? You think we fake reactions on this bitch? Come on, now, what the fuck is 2024 more fake shit? Accounts of people who are seemingly pretending to be kids. It reminds me of Pipergate in a way, and I feel like all of these pages are run by the same person because of the horrendous editing style that makes my eyes bleed. Many of the photos on this account are an edit of this goofy face on a real person's body. And a lot of the bodies are in suggestive poses, which makes me think this is a definite fetish account. Is this just a really, really, really weird hobby? It seems like the poster's first language is French, and many of the posts are just generally weird and hard to understand. I'm curious what you guys think about this. <laughs> With Maria's post are photos from three fuck accounts, giggling, all fuck, exhibiting highly nigga. similar. <laughs> You'll see this nigga in right here. You'll see these pictures, nigga. Is that Hell not? No. Bro, you don't see this, this shit, shit. Creepy. You over here giggling, bro? Because the nigga's so you ugly, nigga. Him. He's fucking ugly, ugly as fuck. That's why I'm giggling. This nigga ugly as shit. God fuck damn. I'm not pulling, fuck no, I'm not pulling this nigga Instagram up. Truth Sticks 11. Is. Stephanie Schooling. And Smart Schoolboy 9. At a cursory glance, it's clear that all of these are connected. They all incorporate images of children, edited in a way in which their faces rest in the trenches of the uncanny valley. They all exhibit heavy synthetic makeup, have massive lips, their heads are disproportionate. The saturation seems to be cranked up. 
All of these rest at the precipice of visual overload and absolute depravity. Walls of text are thrown in our face about school, friends, things they're interested in, entire facets of their lives. But it's clear that these quote unquote children, as they're presented, do not even exist. goes without saying that we've seen this type of behavior before. People online trying their hand and creating an ARG in hopes of generating online attention and viral clicks. But even still, I wonder... What the fuck is an ERG? I don't know. Never heard that before. Engagement ratio gain or something? What is this what we're that? dealing with here? On the account TruthSticks11, many of the early posts carry a considerable amount of irony. Their uploads take an almost condescending tone, lambasting the rise of online predators, following and commenting on the profiles of young boys. They take on this alias of an overly concerned parent, and make post after post after post, sharing advice about potential danger online. In many ways, this contradicts everything we've seen so far in our limited investigation. This doesn't exactly add up, especially considering that, just a few months later and completely out of nowhere, Truthsticks begins to exhibit the very behavior they're criticizing. From March 2022 and onward, they morph from a concerned parent on a mission against online predators to displaying images of their supposed son in compromising positions sharing a myriad of highly disturbing photo edits, and even begin to follow a handful of accounts that immediately set off red flags. TruthSticks 11's erratic behavior appears like one massive self-report, someone on a tirade against the very thing they turned out to be, or perhaps have been all along. None of this made any sort of sense, leading many to speculate that, while yes, this is insanely creepy. Is any of it real? What in the actual fuck? Really fucking weird. Not really sure the reason behind it. Maybe to groom kids or something. But it's really odd. This is probably the most disturbing thing ever uncovered on this subreddit. I asked the other day if anything actually sinister has ever been on here, but now I have my answer. I'm very glad that this sick person is getting exposed. If there's any exploitation material on their account like some have been saying, nobody here should hesitate to report it to the police. Sandre. Off bat, this what is weird. What kind of shit you got me watching, bro? Bro, this is, this is, bro. This is this horror YouTube. This is horror YouTube. This is scary, bro. I just I woke up from a nap. I wasn't ready for this, bro. I told, I warned you. I tried to warn yeah, you. But bro, we're going through this you, together, bro. though. We're going through this together. You feel me? I don't feel together. We're going through this together. I seen Los Polos react to it. And once the video started, I paused it. And I said, me and my brother got to react to this. Bro, this shit is creepy as fuck. This shit is weird as fuck. Like I said, this is like, what? Go ahead. Next level creepy pasta shit, bro. It is. Is this real shit or is it just creepy bro, pasta? We shit? got an A. We gonna have to watch. But look, like I said, motherfucker, uh, like these reporting channels. What's like the little TikTok news nigga? He posted about Buddy, all type of shit. I ain't gonna lie. I it was a video that he posted, not the. Smart schoolboy dude, but one of the TikTok reporter niggas that be the white boy with the mustache and shit. He posted a video reporting it, and at the end of it, it had a video of the nigga that's doing all these profiles 
chasing after a little boy. Nah, bro. Chandra. I don't know if this shit real. I don't know what's going Understandably, on. Understandably. But buddy ass, this up. whole people left rabbit hole is crazy. Eager to find out who was doing this and why. It took hardly any time at all for Redditors to uncover other accounts in the same vein, too, as Truth Sticks and Schoolboy were far from the only ones involved here. As it turned out, there was a schoolgirl Teresa, New Girl 12, a Stephanie Stansfield, and a trove of others all spread out across various social platforms. I mean, is that 13? By outward appearances and with so many accounts involved, this almost looks like it's being done by a group. I mean, it has to be. They talk to each other, like each other's photos. There's no way this schoolboy <laughs> dude has enough time to run all of it. I'm sorry, that nigga ugly as fuck. I'm so sorry. This shit is serious, but every time he they pop this nigga up on the on the on the on the on the, on the shit, I have to laugh, bro. I'm sorry. This nigga's ugly as fuck. This nigga ugly as fuck. I'm sorry. Big tooth, big lip. This nigga look ugly as shit. Especially for something like an ARG, right? Well, not exactly. You see, Schoolboy, across all of his accounts, has a very, very strange way of putting on various personas. And on nearly every single video, on all of nearly What the fuck? I'm out of here. Nah. Nah, stay, bitch. Before this video entered production, the profile of Smart Schoolboy 9, the centerpiece of this story, one of the only accounts with original uploaded videos by a discernible person was taken down. It's unclear if this was done because of policy violations or if he's scrubbing his online presence, but as it stands, this one is gone. That's not to say that there aren't archives though. So pardon the potato quality. <laughs> On the Smart Schoolboy 9 account, we can find a plethora of images and video of what appears to be a man dressed up in a school uniform. We can see him outside on walks, getting ready for school, and showing off his mini boots that he has a very strong fascination with. It's a grown it goes ass man. Saying that this person is nowhere near the age of a child, this despite so his scary, efforts bro. to appear that way. On that nigga looks six seven too. He bro. talks about I'm his about life cry, in school, bro. his experiences with <laughs> other boys. <laughs> My nigga. Imagine seeing some shit like that in the middle of the night or in the middle of the fucking day. You look out the corner of your eye and you see this big freaky motherfucker in a schoolboy uh, outfit. Uh, Get this shit off my son. Uh, Chat, this nigga just. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good That nigga stuck his tongue out, man. Talks about his life at the school. Access to classrooms on multiple occasions. What so the far, fuck, Chad? This behavior is incredibly weird and repulsive. However, these videos aren't outright <sighs> illegal. Because of this, and combined with the activity on Truth Sticks, some have passed this entire thing off as nothing but a massive LARP. Someone with far too much free time on their hands and with very, very <sighs> weird fixations. But after diving into this a bit more, though, I found that that isn't quite the case. There's something I gotta show you. Uh -uh. We'll return after these messages. All right, guys. Before we get to that, do that, I'd like shit, to tell you. Man, I hate that shit. But yeah, Chandra, this nigga. Do you think this is a black man, or do you, you what? What do you think when you see this motherfucker? It's the devil. It's the devil. <laughs> it's crazy. 
Me and my coworkers was like, bro, this neat. I ain't gonna lie. This shit creepy, cuz. I don't you know did what. Not say this shit. You just said, yeah. "Oh, this nigga ugly. This nigga ugly." You didn't Bruh. say that this shit was fucking terrifying, my nigga. Bruh. <laughs> this shit is terrifying. Yeah, this nigga. Dope. But this You're nigga fine. ugly this is fun. I'm You're sorry, fine, bro. Bro, when I see like at first, I didn't know he was like interacting with real human beings. Like I thought this nigga was like when. When motherfuckers are showing me the pictures of this nigga and they're showing like uh on the reports what they did on TikTok, I'm just thinking this nigga's in his bedroom dressed up like that. But when the motherfucker put the nigga chasing the little kid at the end of his video, that's when I was like, oh no, this shit is for real. Like somebody gotta go in GTA, they gotta go blip this nigga down in real life, like there's no way this nigga is still alive. If he was in America, he would be dead by now. I mean, he would be not living, you know? He would be unalive. But, chat, this nigga is just, it's, it's, a, it's a sicko, bruh. Behind a wall of next generation encryption. Nord. This shit is insane. This shit make me cuz uncomfortable. We got some good videos after this. You can relax. Nah, I just need to get this one video out, you gang. Oh, and we're gonna go to some good shit after this. One month lower. Oh God. In the current online discussion, there hasn't been much said about the account Stephanie Stansfield. However, interestingly, it's one of Schoolboy's earliest and arguably most disturbing. Dating back to 2019, this man took on a persona called Stephanie. Since the creation of this page, he's gone forth to make a Twitter account, a Facebook page, and even numerous other Instagram handles, all under this alias. While he gives his other pages a considerable amount of attention, he, for some reason, took a strange liking to this one in particular. All across Stephanie's profiles, he can be seen dressing as her. Discussing their experience in grade that school. That nigga's sick. And weirdest of all. What? In a twist that comes as no surprise, the man behind this rabbit hole expresses a fantasy. And in our hands, we effectively have another Piper Gate. Daily Capper. Stephanie Stansfield. This just goes to show protect your Oh my god! Oh my god! This nigga is oh my god! Bro, my bro, <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Do not stop this fucking video again. Put this into two times speed. I don't want to be here no more. Uh -huh. This what nigga? the fuck was that? My Milton Keynes, MK11, dressed for school. I really love it in year seven, oh and I love writing poetry. My Morpha music heart. I race to complete my poems when I've got an early start. Heart racing, mixed race rhythms, maximizing miracles. Rice They're reading with the rap dialogue. On the map, They're reading my the Kenton text. London syllables. Dancing though I know my underwear might show if I lean forward. Good. How many Aside times me, Polo's fat ass celebration. gonna go live? Being God able damn. To spot a child's underwear. Stephanie makes a reference to Milton Keynes, a region just north of London in the UK. This, combined with various other media he shared, quickly led onlookers to realize that this man has been making his rounds across the city of London for years. Also in this post are clear references to poetry, something we'll find to come up later. Upon searching for the name Stephanie Stansfield on Google, we're able to find traces of this person in the wild. For instance, hidden on a random page of the Kennington Runoff, a news website serving the titular neighborhood in South London, we can see Stephanie chiming in on an article about a youth club. Here though, their mannerisms surprisingly appear a bit tamer. Are there any unusual or rare pictures including landing areas, lifts, etc. of Caring Point? The tower block that stood at Hotspur Street from 1969 to 2000? I learned what happened to Karen Point, but have yet to find any demolition pictures. Even on the 20th anniversary of its demolition, 
or pictures of the play space that temporarily replaced the building. Thank you for any research into Karen Point. If we had no prior context to this person, this comment would exist in complete normalcy. In a way, it's almost like this person isn't even the Stephanie Stansfield that we've come to know so far. The one showcasing eerie edits, pretending to be a child, creating riddles and poetry. This nigga look like It's it. like that persona is gone. You know, part of me wants to believe that this person has no ties to the rabbit hole, but even here, I noticed that they just couldn't help themselves. Stephanie Stansfield inquired about a play area, a place obviously associated with kids. Doing any research online about this alleged play place leads to nothing. It existed for such a short period of time that hardly anyone recalls that it was even there. It was a blue. Did that yellow bone mic just hop in here? No. What's that? I told your ass don't stop this video again, Slime. My fault, Twain. Lip you in history. Get right. So insignificant and overshadowed by the disaster that came before it that it's hardly worth mentioning. What is that? Oh, it's this, 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 uh, fucking. It's the chat. Why is the chat going and got them? What the fuck? It's playing audio from the chat. How does it? How do you do that? Education. Text Ooh, to speech is off scared. right now, my nigga. Sorry. Scared. Face orange. Biting nails. That's crazy. Yet Stephanie recalls it to such a degree that they've been on the hunt for any pictures of it. This also seems like even as far back as the year 2000, this person was hanging around play areas, leading me to wonder, was he up to his same antics back then, or is this act fairly recent? Also on the internet is another link, this time leading us to a PDF file of a 2018 publication by a London charity called the Streetham Society. Within this, they share a myriad of news and happenings around this area of London. However, on page 11, they include a segment called the Poetry Corner, in which we can spot a very familiar name. Oh, Hi to no, the Streetham Society. Sick. I'm Stephanie Stansfield and Shy. I'm 12 years of age, year seven. I'm London-born and lived in Streetham for a while. I've written a poem. I asked my half-brother what he remembers about the area. Then I put my thoughts onto paper. I could have written much more, but I wanted to keep it short, and yet still include a little tribute to June Whitfield. So it's as if I've traveled through time to include so much. I hope my poem is of some use. Yours sincerely, Stephanie. After glancing at her writing, it's abundantly clear that this poem was not written by a 12-year-old. It shares details of buildings that were there in the 1990s, as well as references to TV actors that would be not only unrealistic for a child to remember, but impossible. But even through this mess, there is something to latch onto. In the poem, Stephanie refers to someone who has supposedly fed her this information about his life growing up in London decades prior. It's her half-brother, David, someone who's old enough to remember all of this. It's someone called David. Back on Reddit, investigators were on a similar <sighs> There's path. no way there's a fucking subreddit for this nigga. That's crazy. The name David was circulating as a potential suspect for days, catalyzed by first-hand accounts of those who had encountered a very similar man to this in the wild. Redditors from his area shared tales of a local figure. A man who would dress up like a child, making his rounds as far south as London, and as far north as Doncaster. So if Buddy, Shunder, if Buddy was in your neighborhood terrorizing the streets of the Springs, if he was terrorizing the Springs, well, you got blinking hand. You got blinking hand. I would have popped. Up. You booming him or what? Yeah, I'm popping. Blood, get that boom. I'm sorry, chat. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. I'm keeping a thousand. Nope, if I seen little smart schoolboy nine, little whatever this nigga name is, little Stephanie nigga, he done, bro. He get a clap. Bah, bah, bah. It's over with, bro. He's gone. He's gone in GTA. He's done for. 
he would not be a. I mean, never mind. He won't be here to make another Instagram post, a fucking article post, none of that shit. And the fact, wait, time out. For the niggas in the UK, London, wherever Doncaster is at, the fact that this nigga been roaming the streets since 1990, terrorizing the streets of the UK, he been terrorizing the UK streets since the 90s. Y'all niggas pussy, bro. That's facts. Y'all niggas pussy. If I seen this nigga on the street, I don't, I don't need proof that he doing anything. Just looking at him, I'm putting my hands on him. I'm putting my hands on him, bro. You need proof to see that this nigga weird? You don't. Put your hands on him. He should, bro. He should not even, bro. <sighs> Am I wrong? Is these these UK niggas pussy if this nigga were around? Am I lying? What a wrong. Where the road men at? Where the road men at? Where the where the where the, where the niggas at? The road men, the niggas that get busy. These niggas obviously not get busy. Fuck. There's some other shit though. They can crank the youth. They crank youth. I'll be quite honest. I was but they ain't gonna get big Stephanie up out of here, bro. Cities, some run it. It's like one of them things that scared you as a child. Then something reminds you of that as an adult, and it puts you back a bit. We're talking like 14-ish years back. I'm 28, almost 29 now. So he lived on my street while I was in my last few years of secondary school and first few years of college, age 14 to 17. He was very well known by pretty much everyone who lived around that area. There was even a video of him at one point titled Donnie Legend. Me and my brother looked for this today, but couldn't find it. It must be at least 14 to 15 years old now though, so it may be deleted. He spent a lot of time wearing a school uniform. Usually the skirt and boots look, but sometimes a suit. Basically the exact same look from his recent pictures, just with a different school uniform. He carried around a little lunchbox with a mirror glued to one side of it. He used to stand behind trees and watch people in the reflection. Yeah, y'all parents, you UK niggas is pussy, bro. You UK niggas is pussy. Your parents is bitches. A motherfucker in America, bro. I don't give a fuck if this is in Arkansas. One of these hillbilly ass niggas would have got down with this weird ass nigga, Big Stephanie, on the dead homies. Like, on my mama, nigga. Even, Chandra, me and you as kids, reckless ass little niggas we was, we would have got down with Big Stephanie, man. If, this, if I seen this nigga wearing a clown suit, bro, me, my cousins, and my brother, nigga, we get down on Big Stephanie on my mama. We would have, nigga, I would have, man, I would have stomped on Big Stephanie on my mama. Big Stephanie would have got, bro, rolled on, bro. But this some shit you don't do, like, this ain't some shit that you do when you, um, moving around shit like that like this is some suburb this is some in the cut <sighs> sneaky shit this is not a nigga that you just pop up on bro but That's all these niggas saying that they seen blood and they saying they seen blood in, 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 in the public they seen buddy in public bro ain't no niggas ain't no ain't no ain't no uh street niggas or no shit like that using reddit so you gotta no no your... I'm not saying but even if a nigga was using Reddit, it's still motherfuckers in the neighborhood who got first hand knowledge. This motherfucker said he lived in my neighborhood. So the motherfuckers that living in your neighborhood, they obviously if you see them, you're not the only nigga that seen them before. Probably the other little niggas seen them. They parents they telling their parents, hey, this little nigga over here, Big Stephanie looking like it and shit. <laughs> This nigga out here being weird. <laughs> he, he, we, we on a swing. This nigga on the basketball court peeking over in a fucking pole. Like, well, you do gotta know too that when it come to humanity, it's like a retaliation type of existence. Like niggas, if you don't do nothing to them, they just gonna ignore you and leave you be. Like they not even gonna bother you until you do something to them. They not even gonna acknowledge it. So they probably don't see. They see it as weird. But because but they, he ain't do nothing. But he ain't do nothing to their people yet. They they don't give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. So it's like waiting until a nigga bust a move and shit instead of being proactive and shit. Man, yeah, just dope. like that little boy in Georgia. They went out to his house. They had all these red flags. 
Didn't stop that little motherfucker. And guess what he did? He went to the school and was fucking spawn spawn trapping niggas. For what? The police could have stopped that little motherfucker. Put that little nigga in a psych ward. But no, they want to talk about, we don't have enough evidence. You got enough evidence when this little motherfucker said he was going to go to school blowing motherfuckers down? A year ago. But he ain't do nothing yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, he just terrorized a nigga. This nigga, it's a video of this nigga, smart schoolboy, chasing a little nigga down. He should be blinked, bro. He should be blinked already. He used to follow kids home from school, going tree to tree. <sighs> there were a few times he was caught looking through people's living room windows that had confronted him in the past. My brothers and stepdad had a few altercations with him. My stepdad and mom especially didn't feel safe living on the same street as him and didn't like how close he lived to the local school, about a 50 second walk. The police were called more times than I'd like to count and they were never ever concerned. He never committed a crime according to them. They were very concerned for his safety in this. He was always seen as such a danger but I honestly just assumed, stupidly as a naive teenager, that this guy didn't know how to use the internet or at the very least was monitored it's horrible he's bruh i think little nigga special too i think he's special but y'all keep why do niggas why do people give motherfuckers the benefit of the doubt if i seen them if i see one of you young niggas outside you young niggas that be with the ski mask i'm not giving you the benefit benefit of the doubt nigga i see you little niggas i'm like ooh, let me get up out of here yeah I ain't got time to play with y'all. If I seen this thing on the street, I'm not giving this nigga the benefit of the doubt. Nothing. We on him. He's weird. I don't but care you don't if he. Be that guy. You, so no. this is the thing, though. Like, yeah, and you I don't want to be that guy. But, this shit, but you gotta be realistic, cause in the in the chance that this is real, and this motherfucker is out there with the harming kids and shit, I don't play that game. So exactly. But you gotta be real about the fact that, like, when you see people that's disabled or special you don't automatically be like how how retarded is this nigga and i'm gonna gauge how i treat them based off of that you give them a lot of grace and a lot of like um you handle them super delicate regardless of how far along the spectrum they are or how like i said retarded niggas is so if you saw this nigga you'd probably be like that nigga's i'm gonna just stay away from him you're not gonna be like this oh. nigga might be. I'm gonna just press him and see how he is, and then you had an uncomfortable conversation where you like, all right, all right, the R word. Somebody R -word. come up and be like, you know, this nigga like super special. Like this nigga got Down syndrome, and you over here bullying this nigga. You like, well, no, I ain't bullying him. This nigga just look weird, and then now you gotta have that whole bullying conversation. That whole like, it's not just to see this nigga do thing. Like it's. If niggas saw this nigga and was like, he probably being monitored and all this extra shit, they thought this nigga was retarded. Yeah, I understand that. Like, you remember we had the conversation about functioning special niggas. And I'm like, they're, they're not like, okay, they probably not functionally okay to do certain things, but they're not slow. They're not stupid. You remember I told you one of my co-workers is special, but the, the motherfucker know every goddamn quote in the goddamn South Parks. Yeah. You That's need a... intelligence to do that. So he's not dumb. He just got a fixation and that's all his mind is on is TV. Watching his TV shows, shit like that. And mentally, he just can't get out of that. That's I understand. I understand that. Ooh, but what, buddy, right no, here? I won't. I would. I would say you kind of understand it. I wouldn't say you understand it. I don't understand it to the fullest, but I'm like, oh, when you when a month, yeah, yeah, when the motherfucker told me, oh yeah, he's just like he, the, whatever little thing he is you on the spectrum it. is, you, you know, what I'm saying whatever disability he got, they got a hyper fixation on certain things that they like, and. You know what I'm saying? His just happened to be TV shows, and that nigga know all the quotes and from the show. you had to handle that a certain type of way. You didn't go out right and be like, nigga, why you acting like that? You just, yeah. You, you played the background, and you got 
in a safe space where you could ask questions and be like, what's wrong with buddy ass over there? Is he all right? You ain't be like, nigga, we're retarded. You, you said what's wrong with bro, and they explained it to you. See, this is the type of shit I'm talking about. Yeah. It like, ain't just pull up, do things. Yeah, like, I know I know it's not, but if the police know this nigga is walking around, following little kids, doing all these things, in America, you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah, you can. You That's can. Thing, Look, you can, but somebody's so, gonna see you about that. Come correct, bro. Like again, like I said, if this is real, I don't play to play the game. So, yeah. you, like, you can't stop a nigga from doing anything unless he's doing causing a crime. Like, unless he's doing a crime, and that's the fucked up part that you like, we have to just, wait until a nigga. Like I said about the little school school blicker, we have to wait till these little motherfuckers commit a crime just to have action. Like that it's, shit it's is sad. Young. It goes into a bunch of it goes into a bunch of um philosophical discussions um that you would have to acknowledge when you start to run into that question. You said it's sad, but think about if niggas started profiling you, like you already black. Yeah. If niggas started profiling you to the fullest though, like actively profiling you, then yeah. we're moving into the digital space of like um artificial intelligence and facial recognition mm. like i can't say who i work for or where i work for them at but we do stuff with facial recognition and improving that software and shit like that like nigga i can pick your face out even if you have makeup on it or even if you, you like all types of shit like yeah it's getting to that point so if we get to the point where we are telling these and taking advantage of these artificial intelligence. We start profiling niggas and shit. Then we start policing niggas before they even do the crime. Now you in a whole different scenario. And it's like, are you invading on my rights? Like, is this the big brother situation? Like it's a whole bunch of shit. So until you commit a crime, you innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. You you, wait, 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 wait. I understand. You said commit a crime, you know, in America, you commit a crime. It don't matter if you fucking jaywalk. Everybody can get your picture once you get that mug shot. He's, they said he's been arrested multiple times. Nobody has a clear picture of this nigga. I don't know if that's a UK government things that they don't put niggas mug shots up when they get arrested and stuff. But in America, nigga, you get arrested, your mug shot pop up. You can go get that. Easy. There's no way He's been arrested multiple times within the past 40 years and nobody has a real picture of this nigga. That's the crazy part to me. Like, there's no way, you know, UK or London or whatever allows shit like that. Like, you can't put well, a, like... We, can, like we, we could can't, try to... We could try to get informed right now and be like, What's the laws out there? Yeah. But I feel like that'll be doing the most. <sighs> yeah. Let's let's get back to Turned it. up online, though. I'm glad I can now be sure he's left the local city. My daughter starts secondary school next year, and I'm glad he won't be around to terrorize her. I just wish and hope that the authorities would protect the school kids where he is. This man is a known creep. I used to work at the court 20 years ago, and he was in court in the paper several times for approaching and writing to underage girls while wearing makeup and young girl style clothing. He usually got away without conviction because the courts believed that he didn't intend to do any wrong. He was trying to speak to those girls because he wholeheartedly believed he was a girl of that age. What the fuck? Like, that's the loophole niggas get? That's the loophole these I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But you Chandra, I'm sorry. You wally. You were this what, is Chandra? Shit. you gotta chill, bro. I'm not trying to bro, I'm just shit, What? I'm just saying, like I can understand it's mentally disabled niggas that No, really stop that. Bro. Stop that. We can, says, I can understand I can understand hey, I can, a, look this is dope. This is no, dope. Not look, this. chat. I don't give a fuck what he talking about. That nigga he like to be Nigga, on the, on the right, uh, left side of things and shit, he don't want to ask questions and fucking, and, and keep it a thousand to tell his p- opinion. But me, chat, I can understand, like, a, a like a woman want to be a man, and a man want to be a woman, and you say, oh, they don't, like, that's what they want to be. 
Don't look at them that way. Da da da. da. But a grown ass man saying he mentally wants to be a nine year old or a twelve year old, mm. I'm not going for that. I don't give a fuck what mental disabilities that's not is. What's being and said, bro. That's what they literally just said. No, it's not. Read it right there. Because he take your time. look. It says. He usually got away with without conviction because the courts believe he didn't he didn't intend to do any wrong. He was trying to speak to those girls because he wholeheartedly believed he was a girl of that age. Yeah, the court, the court and the judge literally said that in their investigation, they deem that this nigga is on. This, all right, fuck the sugar coating shit since you already animated this shit. The niggas is. Ret- and his hey, come on! Stop saying the R word, up. nigga. Huh? You keep saying the R word. Well, what you want me to say? I'm say special. To to understand. All right, this nigga is so special, and his his specialty is fucking. He thinks he's dead. Like, but even whether it's due to <sighs> trauma, brain injury, or fucking just genetic um predisposition. The nigga brain fucked up and he think that shit, bro. And you and you being an ableist because you saying I don't give a fuck if the nigga might be disabled or not. This nigga using it as a scapegoat. Cause in the chance that is not <laughs> like you didn't walk up to your coworker and call him like call him slow to his face or nothing. Like you did. I know you being animated, but you gotta. No, be no, no, no! Don't don't say. Oh no, because you don't know the scenario of which I found out. Mine that that's not. You can't just say you didn't go up to your coworker and say that, nigga. I was literally hissing in the bathroom. He was on the other seat, two, three stalls down from me. I'm pissing. I walk out the stall. His handler tells me, "Hey, this nigga talking South Park." Da 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 da. I didn't I didn't have to walk up on him. Nigga, once I got out the stall, the motherfucker said, hey bruh, I know you you heard that. This nigga talking South Park, don't mind him. Cool. That piece that out. You act like, oh, I just let this nigga talk South Park for 10, 10 days and 10 weeks, and then I ain't say nothing. Like, what the fuck? That's not the, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. So you can rephrase that. But then again. I'm gonna just keep it a thousand. What happened to mental institutions? What happened to handlers? I think this is a government thing that we talked about where we're lacking uh, funding for mentally challenged adults. They do all this shit for these mentally challenged kids and once they turn 18 and they get that fake ass diploma that they get, they let these little niggas go in the wild and say, Figure it out. You know what I'm saying? No more babysitters for you, nigga. That's what happens. We need to do better. I I think this is what America or the world needs to do. We need to try to make legislation and help get more funding for mentally challenged people. That go for mental illnesses, uh, disabilities from birth, birth defects, all type of shit. That's that's one thing that we need to do. We worried about all this other bullshit. We need to worry about the, the these niggas that's mentally challenged for real. Cause that's really, you know what I'm saying, to me, a real important thing in the world. You feel me? But I understand what you're saying. But at the same time, knowing the fact that this nigga terrorizing children is crazy to me. And yes, I am animated because I got a little sister. If my and my little sister used to walk home from school, and if I knew a nigga in the neighborhood was terrorizing little kids, chasing them and shit, smart school boy nine would be on a t-shirt. Facts. Wholeheartedly believed he was a girl of that age. With the claim that this person was roaming neighborhoods as far as 14 years back, along with the statement that schoolboy had wound up in court 20 entire years ago for writing to underage girls, even then, it's apparent that he's far, far older than I initially thought. This is and how he like scary point. This is how Stephanie knew so much about an era she never lived in. Doing the math here, at minimum, smart schoolboy nine, is at least 40 years old. (laughs) When I 
I lived in Doncaster, there was a man who used to walk around dressed as a 1960s schoolboy who looked like he'd walked out of a black and white photo. I'm pretty sure his skin was painted white. People said he was called David. For decades, this man has been haunting neighborhoods around the UK, approaching children that are likely afraid of him, posting pictures of those that have no knowledge of his existence, and gravitating towards schools, seemingly under the belief that he's a child. Online activity by this person, in which he's well-spoken and drops the act, though, like on his Facebook. He makes it clear that he knows what he's doing. This okay, sorry, how you feel about that? As a real nigga, I know when to admit I might be wrong about something, but I have to say, until the facts are shown, niggas have to get a benefit of the doubt. Like right. I said, you I don't like no matter how you want to play it, whether it's real, whether it's not, whether you animated or not, the way the game go is you treat niggas with special needs a certain type of way. Yeah. So until you know the truth about a nigga, you never jump gun and go crazy on them. Yeah. So if the nigga by the courts was playing dumb, playing crazy, and then it's found out on the back end, like, nah, that nigga got some semblance of intelligence beyond just, you know, being stuck in a nine-year-old, you know, era, nine-year-old phase, nine-year-old mentality. Like, this a grown nigga playing. Like, okay, then, then you treat it accordingly. But, because like I'm just saying, you would think we got people that we know that's disabled. Yeah. We don't know who we might meet that's disabled that we might uh, grow an attachment to. So it's like, you don't want nobody to treat them a certain type of way off of, off the jump and shit. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. But uh, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm not in the uh, political sphere of nowadays people use feelings as a justification and you know i'm not good with my uh words when i'm talking about subjects that i'm not well like i said you're not mature yet and you haven't had you're six foot five 400 pounds like you haven't had somebody i ain't hey bitch time out i ain't never hit over 400 that's crazy Test my law. So you use a big nigga and you've never had anybody retaliate against you in any way, shape, or form. And so it's not like it's gonna just quickly equate to you that's like you gotta have some cooth with some shit. It's not even just political correctness and shit. Mm. It's just about being uh mindful and being patient with certain shit and trying to um express yourself correctly to people that might take shit the wrong way yeah. like even me and you like i'm not special in any sense of the word but the way i t interpret some shit i interpret it different the way you intended it other motherfuckers might attempt interpret that shit so bad that at my school he shot a nigga over mm -hmm. that shit yeah you feel me like at their school shootings that start over that shit. It's niggas that die in road rage incidents over shit like like. So it's like you gotta have some type of know when to hold them, know when to fold them type shit yeah. against a nigga like. But cause okay, you saying the wrong shit could end your life in a moment. Yeah. It, oh yeah, I tell my my coworker was telling me one time that uh some bald white man pressed him at a gas station because he said he told the little he told uh the bald and white nigga. Ladies first when he was open the door for the nigga at the gas station and he said the nigga pressed him. I'm like the nigga could have killed. He could have bit you down. He could have uh, guess what? Your life. He could have took your David life. Nigga, you could have tried this nigga. This David nigga. This, you would have found out this nigga is in his 20s or 30s. He's years older than you. He yeah. tore your motherfucking head off your shoulders and you know them yeah. special niggas got yeah, that was, extra strength yeah. on they, they, they get that got extra strength. strength and shit. But, they get cap breakers on strength and shit. So Nigga would have popped your motherfucking muffin, all that tough shit, and it's like, but oh shit. I know when we talk about mental illnesses, how much leeway should we give mental illnesses when it when it comes to 
harming others. Like if a a a, a bipolar schizo nigga was stalking a woman, looking through her window. We're going to be like, okay, he's mentally ill, but he needs to go to jail. He's a danger to society. You can't do that, though. He got to commit a crime with the way that society stalking is, is a crime. Huh? Stalking is a crime. You will get, but you, you don't. So that's the thing, too, though, is like you asking questions about solutions that we can't like. We can't even brainstorm because we don't have the information. You don't yeah. know nothing about law. You don't know nothing about um, mental health research. You don't know nothing about um, rehabilitation of people with mental health issues. Like, niggas can't even get a fucking prescription that'll fix their anxiety or fucking um, ADHD without throwing some shit off. Like, we still, we pretty much in the infant stages of that shit. And it's not researched enough, like you were saying, due to lack of funding and all this shit so it's like yeah you asking questions no no we couldn't even answer because we can't we don't got no info no no i'm saying i'm asking this question because i'm about to bridge a thought that i had uh because i watch fucking what's these people you know i watch jadeon skeeter john uh all these other niggas this dap 2k 20 nigga and yeah i see i remember seeing one of the uh one of them predator catching videos and the motherfucker's mama was like, oh yeah, doctors say this nigga's mentally like 11 years old. So the little motherfucker, his brain is like, the nigga think he a child like brain, but it's like, even though that's a child like brain, the police still arrested him. Police still charged him with trying to hook up with a minor and shit. So it's like, when I say how much leeway are we giving the mentally ill, mentally challenged niggas is because some of these mentally challenged niggas are being literally diagnosed with some shit that you could be like, oh, damn, that nigga really, really, really think he 11, but the nigga 45. And he still gets charged with being a SO. SO. That's, that's what we get, like, you know, so that's why um, I'm not giving this nigga the benefit of the doubt. Right. Well, that's where we bring in counseling and it's a bunch of jobs that ain't getting fulfilled because we don't got enough people going into the space. Mm-hmm. Like we don't got enough niggas that's committed to improving the mental health of humanity. We don't got enough niggas going into the job space of it's not paying enough and niggas want to live. So you got to think if we in a society where me as in myself is important over everybody else how can we help others with the limited amount of people that are committed to helping others like you ain't got no funding to help niggas like feel like okay at least if i'm helping other motherfuckers i get paid a big bag for it like we need counselors we need all types of people that are vet these motherfuckers to prevent something like this but we don't got that yeah. the resources we don't got the manpower we don't got the money for it yeah yeah i understand i just you know from my point of view like i said it's like a double-edged sword because it's like we picking little niggas that be dming these bitches off the little apps and shit they're we committing lock- crimes yeah too. but this nigga's committing crimes too and and that's the thing. Maybe too, not in his country. In his country, it seems yeah, like they're deeming it true. not illegal. But if he was in Amer- from an American standpoint, everything this nigga doing is illegal. But what would you charge him with, and how much time would you give him? Because again, you had brought up that dude that was charged. But when you say charged, you can be charged, and charges can be dropped. You can be charged, and you can get sixty days house arrest, like or community service, like it, like it don't stop there. It's like that nigga was convicted for 40 years or that nigga was convicted for 10 years about this shit. Like that's really where it mattered. Cause yeah. Didn't Chris Hansen stop doing, cause not only was he getting government officials, but it was like, these charges was only sticking so far. Like, nah, he stopped cause was... he stopped cause a nigga blew his noodles out after getting caught. Uh, no, it was the dude, a new, new Chris Hansen, it was like, oh my god, that's Chris Hansen. That's my uh, 
we we actually know each other. Like that's my uh friend type shit. And he went home, blew his shit off, and I guess his sister was like some higher up in the government in the FBI, and they got that motherfucking show gone. That was what really happened. Yeah, I don't remember hearing nothing about that. I heard a different story, but uh, that's what happened. Um, it's about who. Yeah, you might be more informed than me, but yeah, I watch a lot of Mr. Gigi. But let's finish this nigga David out, bro. Person this nigga, this nigga named David Stephanie, uh, motherfucking little schoolboy, uh, Q and shit. I don't know what the fuck this nigga name and is. This person bro. is active, a local boogeyman, if you will, that shows no signs. I'm stopping. Fuck is this long ass pause? With the rise of the internet, David has harnessed social media to express his desires, utilizing heavily filtered and often AI-generated images of kids to toe the line of legality. Like we've seen on many of his posts, he emulates parents, putting on a facade of concern for the very people he's allegedly preying on. He falsifies personalities, presenting them to real-world publications as legitimates, and across his many profiles, he follows a laundry list of kids. At the end of the day, Schoolboy and his plethora of alts are just the tip of the iceberg. And for all we know, countless other accounts could be hiding in the void of cyberspace. Personas emulating children, interacting with children, and creating edits of real kids that have no idea they're being posted online. This man follows countless minors, and whether he's physically harmed or has endangered any of them in the real world, at this point, we have no idea. Going by one of his videos, however, see it a little bit bro you ain't have to replay it that uh, shit no, i just want to read the caption at the school chasing another boy running in healed mini boots <laughs> this nigga's sick <laughs> i truly hope that this isn't the case but unfortunately the evidence isn't very promising I'm sorry, special or not, he getting blicked down. I don't give a fuck. David is reportedly now under investigation by UK police. Yeah, whatever. He ain't commit a crime. You can't. So him chasing that little nigga don't matter to you? I'm not saying it don't. I know from illegal shit. I hate you, nigga. I hate you, bro. Shut up. Because I, I, I feel you. I want to protect the kids too, bro. But you know the type... I don't think you understand the type of can of worms that you open when you just do shit. You ever heard a butterfly effect? You ever heard a domino effect? Shit like yeah, that? I know what you mean, You get bro. those theories and stuff like that? Bro, you do this shit to one nigga and it changes the landscape for everything, bro. See, this, this, this person's comment is exactly how I felt when I seen... This shit pop up on TikTok. Oh man, I hope this isn't one of those ARG vids, fake ass videos, you know? In video, I wish this was an ARG video. Like, I wish this shit wasn't real. Once I seen the little nigga get chased, I said, yeah, it's over with. The laughing Definitely and joking, life. that shit killed my yeah, vibe. I'm not gonna lie. And you know that was an edited laugh, too. That wasn't no fucking real laughter, bro. That little nigga probably was screaming for real if that nigga oh, really God. pissed that nigga, bro. Oh, if God. That was a fake video. That nigga, that was some fake audio, cuz. Oh, God in heaven, bro. All right, in a, in, a, in a Reddit community, they have found out where he lives in. 
It's in Doncaster, an English city near Sheffield. If there's any local watching a video, please make sure this video is known throughout England. He's been doing this since the 90s and has been arrested once in the 90s doing the exact same thing you see on Instagram. That nigga watched that annoying video for that hour. I was cleaning. I was cleaning up, so it was just in the background while uh, I was cleaning up. I heard you. Why, like, why can't I, I watch videos and just be cleaning up at the same time? Like that shit just be in my pocket, and I just be cleaning. Please don't interact with this guy online. You might cause him to panic, delete his posts, removing any evidence. The nigga already deleted the post. Uh, the page. The page. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and from Doncaster. Shit. Wait, what? What did you just say? No, nah, I'm not saying nothing, buddy. Oh, go ahead. Because I was just reading the comment. I literally wasn't saying nothing. Oh, all right. Fuck. See, somebody in the comments kind of agree with me. Mental Ill illness is, isn't an excuse for this. A lack of defined identity is an excuse for this. And a lot of... And a lack of tangible evidence of victims is not an excuse for this. Police should have should have been much stricter with this individual from the very beginning. You can't tell me there's any good reason for an adult to dress like that and then interact with children just vile. Let's see what the other thing is. You say. take your niggas uh human rights and free will, bro. I feel you. I support that shit one hundred percent. But what are y'all niggas willing to sacrifice? Cause if you yeah. can't take it. Don't dish it out. Like, <laughs> See, I'm down to take eight names and get ass whoop, whoop ass. But exactly. If you're not about, to, like, if you're not about to be 10 toes with it, then we're not going to, it's not going to work. Somebody said, you can't arrest someone just because you think they look weird. And that's facts. facts. I would have arrested that's Joe facts. a long time ago. Fat booty ass nigga. Should that's homosexual of you, my nigga. It hurts me to be standing on the same soil as this creature. Oh, God. Bro, you think this is bad, nigga? It's some real shit itty oh. humans in this motherfucking existence, oh, bro. Oh, no. Way worse than this nigga, bro. Nah, the, the, nah, the visuals is crazy. I'm sorry. This nigga said the most disturbing thing to me besides the visuals is his voice. It's so uncanny. It feels like it wants to be real, but it can't. Give me true chills. Edit. I know this may not be his real voice, but my point still stands. No, the shit where he, that shit's insane. I ain't gonna lie. When I heard that shit, that I could have stopped. Yeah, did. I could have stopped fucking laughing. I'm sorry. That shit was crazy. This nigga laugh when he's scared or something. I don't yeah, like that shit. I do. I do laugh when I'm scared. I don't trust niggas like that. Um. Yeah, chat. Watch your kids. Uh, what's that one uh old school meme? The nigga was like, "Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide everybody in your family, nigga." You know what I'm saying? 